At the time set out on your admission notice, you will be called from the reception area for your OSCE, the Objective Structured Clinical Exam. The invigilator will take you to the first floor briefing room. You will be asked to take a seat and remain in the room while you wait for the examiner floor supervisor to arrive. He or she will then give a briefing on the rules and peculiarities of the OSCE examination. Whilst in the briefing room, you may be given the opportunity to view a diagram of specific equipment used in the OSCE stations. This will allow you to familiarise yourself with certain model types before entering the room. The exam lasts for about an hour and 42 minutes. So if you need to the examiner floor supervisor is a senior member of the OSCE core group. So listen carefully as he or she will give you excellent advice on the various types of questions you can expect. The floor supervisor will leave you in the briefing room to check that the examiners are ready on the exam floor. This will give you an opportunity to use the toilets before you start your exam. On returning, the supervisor will check that all candidates are ready and that everyone knows which cubicle they are assigned to. You will then be escorted to the exam floor. When you enter the exam floor, the cubicles or OSCE stations will be arranged around the perimeter of the room. Station 1 will be on the near left and station 17 just over on the near right. Stations 10 following around to station 14 will be at the far end of the room. Find your assigned station as quickly as possible and stand at the information point. You will have at least one minute to read the candidate information on the laminated sheet outside your station. Fully focus on the information. Read it twice if you have time. Take a mental note of things like the patient's names and details. The floor supervisor will check that the correct candidate is stood outside the correct station by noting the candidate number on your badge. The examiner or invigilator running your station will also check you are in the right place, again by reading the number on your badge. Once everyone is at their correct station and at least one minute has passed, the supervisor will signal to the timekeeper that the exam can start. All stations are allocated five minutes. When the five minutes are up, a bell will sound, indicating that you should leave the station and immediately move clockwise to the information point at your next station. You will have exactly one minute to read the briefing note for that station. On the sound of the next bell, you can enter the station. This process is then repeated for the whole OSCE round. In each of the stations, you will be tested on various aspects of your clinical assessment skills and technical procedures, such as checking equipment and demonstrating your techniques on mannequins. Remember, negative marking is not used in the OSCE and there are no killer stations, so all questions should be answered, even if you're unsure of the answer. In communication or history stations, you are not required to physically examine a patient you will be expected to demonstrate your communication and history-taking skills. The examiner will introduce you to the patient, an actor, and then observe your performance, allocating marks accordingly. In physical or anatomy stations where a role model or actor is present, you will be expected to demonstrate your method of examination, explaining what and why you are doing things. Always make sure your actions are clear to the examiner. Some anatomy stations may use anatomic models or illustrations. As with a role model, you will be asked to explain the anatomy and why and what you are doing. At some stations, for instance, an X-ray station, you will be answering questions without an examiner present, either via an optically marked answer sheet or straight onto a computer touch screen. Where a mark sheet is used, your candidate number will already be printed on the sheet. When answering the questions, make sure you fill in the requisite box beside your answer with a firm, straight, horizontal pencil line, not a slash or a tick. Where a touch screen is used, your candidate number will be displayed on the screen. 
you will be connected directly to the marking system and be guided through a series of multi-choice questions. You input your answers via the touchscreen. These stations may include short video demonstrations or exhibit displays. The resus stations will test your knowledge and skills in dealing with arrest scenarios through the use of a simulator. The simulation station will use an interactive simulator to create clinical problem scenarios and assess how you identify and handle the situation. There may be occasions when your examination in a particular station is completed within the time allowed. If this occurs, the examiner will keep you in the station until the five-minute bell sounds. He will not make any reference to your performance or scores, but may pass the time in social conversation. When everyone has completed the circuit, that's all stations, the timekeeper will ring the bell twice to indicate the end of the exam. Once the exam is complete, your last examiner will thank you as you leave the cubicle and you will be free to go. The OSCE is an endurance test and you'll probably be feeling tired. If you have time between the end of your OSCE and your next exam, try to get some fresh air and don't worry about what you did and said during the exam. Concentrate on what's ahead. When you have completed all exams, you are free to go after what will have been a long and exhausting day. However, there are a few formalities to complete before you leave. Make sure you empty your locker, collect your personal effects and say your goodbyes. If you have left any personal items with the commissionaire, then don't forget to collect them and hand in your candidate badge on the way out. At the end of each exam day, the examiners attend a call-over meeting where they discuss candidate and question performance and confirm the results for that day. Examination results are then placed on the examinations pages of the college website from 2pm on the first working day following your exam. If time allows on a Friday, the examinations manager will ensure that Friday's results are put in place by 8pm. So if your exam was on a Friday, check the website on Friday evening when you get home. The results posted on the website are in the form of a pass or fail list. No other information is given at this stage. Candidates are identified by the use of their candidate number and college reference number. This is the six-figure number that is assigned to you when you join the college. Therefore, make sure you have these numbers to hand when you check for your results. Remember, both numbers are quoted on your admission notice. Confirmation of the results will be sent to you by post. Your result letter will advise you of your scores in each section of the SOE and each station of the OSCE along with your total scores for each component. Examples of OSCE and SOE questions can be found on the examinations pages of the college website and in the guide to the primary examination. If you require any further assistance in applying or preparing for your examination, then please do not hesitate to contact the examinations department. We hope you have found the SOE and OSCE videos useful in gaining an insight into what to expect when sitting the primary FRCA OSCE SOE examinations.